the Comedy Forecast Network. Let's dog ear this for now. Comedy Forecast, episode 354. Smells like space. Comedy Forecast is powered by its patrons. To support the show and get episodes before everyone else, visit patreon.com and search for Comedy Forecast. All one word with the number four. Or just go to comedyforecast.com and click on the Patreon link on the right hand side of the page. In this episode, we talk about smells, get a preview of Disney's D23, visit Mission Control, and more. Come on, let's get to the forecast. Item one of four. Oh, hi, folks. Welcome to, or welcome back to, Comedy Forecast. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that space has a smell? I didn't, until my wife Bonnie told me about this article she was reading. Heck, it almost made me want to take up the whole reading thing. Almost. Now, honestly, folks, emoji is a strain for me. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, space. The article talked about astronauts returning to the International Space Station from spacewalks. It turns out that while they're out there mucking about trying to pretend that they're George Clooney and Sandra Bullock or whatever they're doing, tiny space-borne compounds called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, because nothing is easy to pronounce in science, adhere to their spacesuits. Then, when the astronauts get back inside the station, they can smell these polycyclone anamorphic hail hydras. That's right. They can smell space. And what does space smell like? Well, that depends on which astronaut you talk to. Some say it smells like burnt or fried steak, and others say welding fumes. Obviously, we need to get poets into space for a better description, but you get the general idea. It turns out that even the moon has a smell, something close to spent gunpowder. Apparently, these poly wanna cracker hypno krakens are all over the place. That's because they're compounds produced when stars and planets form. And different compounds exist out there. In fact, if you travel 26,000 light years to the center of the Milky Way galaxy, you'll find a dust cloud called Sagittarius B2. And chances are, it will smell like raspberries and rum. Mmm, that sounds wonderful. We should all go into space. But, but here's what I think. What if all galaxies don't smell the same? What if you traveled 2.7 million light years to the Andromeda galaxy and found out it smelled like wet dog? Pretty disappointing. And a huge waste of time. I mean, by the time you get back, all the good restaurants would be closed. We need to rethink our whole space program. Right now, it's based on what looks interesting, but it really should be based around what that part of space smells like. Sorry, Sagittarius Dwarf Spheroid Galaxy. You smell like the rotten fish my Uncle Donald used to hang out on his front porch to keep the neighbors away. And us too, now that I think about it. But Jupiter's moon Io, I hear that smells like fresh brownies. So there, let's go there. Item two of four. We're just about a month away from the semi-annual convention of all things Disney, the D23 convention, to be held at the Anaheim Convention Center right next to Disneyland. Unfortunately, I won't be able to attend. Therefore, I've asked a Disney expert, Professor Angus LeBeouf, to give me the lowdown on what will be happening at the convention. Hello, Professor. Hello, and Hakuna Matata. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's a wonderful phrase. Do you really think so? Well, I, I mean, I thought... <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Oh, good. It's a horrible phrase. All right, Professor, let's talk about Disney. What sort of announcements can we expect to hear at D23? I would say that you will hear new things. 
Absolutely, because announcing old things would be pointless and stupid. I mean, think about it. Why would they want to do that? No, no, I, I mean, what will these announcements be about? Oh, I get you. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I think it was that door right over there. Well, first, we'll hear about a new Broadway musical from Disney. Oh, uh, Snow White? Nope. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. That would be good. And that is wrong. Uh, the Great Mouse Detective? No, no, and no. Well, what will it be? Herbie, fully loaded. Uh, uh... Ah, you laugh now. I wasn't laughing. It's a figure of speech. Look, when that little Volkswagen Beetle sings his big number at the end of Act One, ah, you'll be bawling your eyes out. Wait a minute. Herbie doesn't sing. You're telling me? The kid is tone deaf. I suggested they replace him with this female Mini Cooper I know, uh, but no luck. I still don't see where... Uh, that's all right. She's really a bit of a diva anyway. Oil me, wash me, lube me. Oh, wait, this is a kid show. What else will we hear about? Are you familiar with the Disney Cruise Line? Sure. Well, this has nothing to do with that. Disney is going to open a chain of restaurants. Oh, uh, what will that be called? Churro and Company. The idea is this. You walk in, and it's just a collection of food carts. Uh, but they're really nicely themed food carts. It's all about the theming with these people. It's supposed to make you feel like you're at the parks. It's okay, I guess. Uh, but I don't quite get the full theme park vibe. Trust me, you will. Because you have to maneuver through a sea of parked baby strollers to get to the food. Ah. That's more like it. Speaking of the parks, anything new there? Absolutely. Uh, are you familiar with the Disney Cruise Line? Yes. Well, this also has nothing to do with that. One of the most exciting things related to the parks is going to be happening in Anaheim. They're going to announce a third gate for Disneyland. Oh, for those of you not familiar with the terminology, in theme park speak, a gate means a theme park. So, Professor, what will this new park be about? Nothing. Like I told you, it's just a gate. They're going to see how well that does, and then maybe they'll flesh it out with some rides that they'll have to replace at a cost of around a billion dollars. I see. But I hear it will be a nicely themed gate. They love their theming. We have time for one more sneak peek, Professor. Right. What else do you have? Are you familiar with the Disney Cruise Line? This has something to do with that, doesn't it? Can't fool you. Except it doesn't. Disney will announce that they are buying another well-known franchise. Like they bought the Muppets and Pixar and Baby Einstein and Star Wars and Marvel and so on and so on and so on. Oh, what are they buying now? Mickey Mouse. Wait. What? With all these mergers and acquisitions and expansions, it looks like they really did forget that it was all started by a mouse. I see. They let that patent expire like a can of creamed corn on the back shelf. Well, Professor, I think... Reminds me, would you like some creamed corn? N no, thank you. But you've done it again. I just have no idea what it is. And please, you're welcome back anytime. Really? Just as long as I'm not here. Item 3 of 4. Mission Control to ISS. This is Mission Control to the International Space Station. Over. Oh, this is the International Space Station. Roger, ISS. Uh, you boys are probably expecting the supply ship to be docking right about now. Well, we've had a bit of what you'd call a situation. Yes, sir, watching. Oh, I didn't realize you boys were watching. I'm going to put a spectacular explosion. Yes, it was a pretty spectacular explosion, wasn't it? Fortunately, no one was hurt, but uh, it leaves us with a bit of a problem. What's that? Did you take a tool to clean up? No, not the cleanup. Well, I mean, yes, but that's not the main thing. You see, we don't have what you'd call a backup supply ship ready to launch. What? That's what it is. Now, now, calm down. We've got a backup plan. We're NASA, remember? We're going to abandon the station. 
No, no. First, we're going to have you boys get into an escaped spacecraft and come home. Sorry, I, I should have been more clear on that part. <laughs> right, but the thing is, we don't seem to have a procedure in place for abandoning the station. You'd think we would, right? I mean, after all, we are NASA. But it's one of those things you say you're going to get around to, and then something always comes up. You know, you have to get ready for the next launch, or you have to go before Congress and explain to them again what the word science means, or... Roger that. Sorry. But like I said, we don't have an official plan. But Bill, you know, Bill and telemetry, well, he just got back from Disney World. And he has a list of what he did to get his house ready for the family being away for a few weeks. And, uh, well, we're going to go by that. <laughs> we're just doing the best we can, ISS. Let's be one big team, okay? Besides, you don't want to get upset. You'll use up your oxygen. All right, that's better. Let's get to it. The first thing on Bill's list is stop newspaper delivery. Really, Bill? You're still getting a newspaper? You're with NASA for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. Uh, I guess we can translate that as stop all deliveries to the space station. <laughs> I guess we got that one covered. <laughs> Sorry about that. A little bit of mission control humor. All right, let's move on. Next, drop the dog off at the kennel. Well, since you guys don't have any pets up there, I... Uh, my window. Oh, you do. Uh, I got two of them. Two of them? Uh, I think so. Where did those come from? <laughs> Boys, I know this is a bad time to bring this up. But when we say you can bring a few personal belongings with you to the station, we mean photos or a favorite t-shirt. No, we don't exactly say it, but it is strongly implied. Well, I don't think there's room for them in the escape pods. You'll have to leave them there until you get back. Besides, it's just two bunnies. How can that go wrong? Okay, next. Leave a few lights on so everyone thinks there's still somebody home. Now uh, that is a good point. I'm betting Sir Richard Branson is just waiting for the place to be empty so he can fly up there and install mood lighting and touchscreen TVs on all the seat backs. <laughs> oh yeah, that sounds great. Until he starts charging NASA for go-go in-flight Wi-Fi on the station. You boys leave some lights on. Roger, prepare to abandon the station. Oh, wait a minute. Bill points out there's one last thing on the list. Be sure you lock the front door. What do you mean you boys don't have a key to the front hatch? One of you must have a key. Well, what do you do when you go out for a spacewalk? ISS, never mind how nice space smells. This is serious. If we don't lock the hatch, who knows who might just come strolling by and ransack the place. <laughs> Negatory, ISS. I do not think zero-gravity space bunnies will make effective guard dogs. I do, however, think that sounds like the most adorable thing ever. <laughs> Hang on a second, ISS. We're going to try to work this out down here. Good news, everyone. JPL has come up with a solution for you. Yeah, we're going to turn the Hubble Space Telescope and point it right at the front hatch. It won't stop someone from breaking in, but we'll have a super high-res picture of them to send to the police. Okay, that's it, boys. Good luck. We'll see you on the ground. This is Mission Control to ISS. Is there anyone there? Is there anyone on the station? Right. I think they're gone, Sir Richard. Well done, lads. Now, let's get us a space station.
item four of four. Well, hi, folks. Clinton here again with a few things that I'd like to cover. First, if you're the type of person that subscribes to things on YouTube, well, Comedy Forecast has a YouTube channel. You can subscribe there. Also, I now put up the episodes on SoundCloud, and you can subscribe through that. I have links to all that over at ComedyForecast.com. I also wanted to mention that if you go to Dragon Con this Labor Day weekend, then you get the chance to see a live performance of Comedy Forecast. That's right. Once again this year, I will be joining forces with the folks from Technorama and putting on a live show in the podcasting track. Expect that to be on Friday night of the convention. And there will be a plethora of other things going on. You'll be able to see us in the parade. We'll be in costumes during the weekend. Of course, all the podcasters who are anybody will be at the Parsec Awards. And there will be a Pizza Friday meetup on Friday afternoon. With pizza! Be sure to check back at ComedyForecast.com just before the convention, and I'll have a full schedule up for you to peruse. I hope to see you there. My goodness, look at the time. Oh, is it that time already, Sir Patrick? Let's wrap this up, shall we? Right, okay. Well, if you have any comments about this episode, why not call the super secret phone line at area code 360-515-0004. The phone not your thing? That's okay. Drop us an email at comedyforecast, all one word with the number four, at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, And you can find all the episodes at ComedyForecast.com. You can also subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever else fine podcasts are listed. As always, this is Sir Patrick Stewart. And I'm Clinton. Saying, that's that's it. it. We're We're done, 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 done. 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 Bye-bye.